Okay, I'm going to tie a uh, Shimazaki CDC Ant. Uh, this is one of Ken Shimazaki's original patterns. And uh, I'm going to tie this one on a Tiemco 102Y, uh, which is an odd-sized hook. So it comes in, you know, uh, 13, 15, 17, 19 kind of thing. Um, and I'm tying it today on a size 17. So um, really kind of think of that as a as a 16, uh, you know, go go one number down. Um, you know, these are supposed to fit in between sizes, and uh, um, they kind of do. So, uh, it's also a black hook. It's got a barb on it. So, uh, for this little ant, it's going to fit in nicely. And uh, I'm out of my normal realm of my nice black background because this black ant doesn't show up very well on it. So, I'm wearing my, uh, see if you can see that there, my Umqua Feather Merchants hoodie that they gave me for free. Uh, no charge at all. Um, which I thought was nice of them. And so here, it's uh, also a nice little light blue color that makes a pretty nice background for this. So uh, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get started now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 14 knot black uh, Vivas. And I'm going to start this thread just about middle of the hook. Just get my jam nut on there. And I'm going to start by dubbing some super fine dubbing. And we want to keep this pretty thin. But I'm going to dub this down about as tight as I can get it on the thread here. A little wax. Make a nice long thin strand. Now one of the cool things about this fly is uh, this was one of the first flies that introduced CDC uh, in the US. And, uh, you know, again, I, uh, you know, for years I took great pride in being a young guy in the fly fishing industry. And now all of a sudden I'm an old guy in the fly fishing industry. So uh, I guess that gives me the perspective from, from back in the day. Um, and I remember when CDC first came out, I didn't understand how the feather worked. Um, you know, a lot of us didn't. We didn't know what it, uh, um, you know, what, what its properties were and what its advantages were. It just looked like a, a sort of a little soft tackle feather, um, you know, a marabou type feather. Uh, and then once we found out that you didn't need to incorporate it with hackle, um, where you could just use it by itself and make the fly float, um, that's where things really took off. So uh, this is one of the first patterns that uh, that put it to use. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build the back end of the ant and um, kind of staying true to, to Ken's shape. Um, this is more of a, a kind of conventional taper, not, uh, uh, not what you'd think of as a kind of a big oval or ball for an ant, um, kind of a long abrupt taper. I'm actually going to put a little bit more dubbing on here for this just to square this off a bit. We want a nice square shoulder on this front edge. You can see I can kind of tighten those last few turns of dubbing down and then I'll end with the bare thread on the hook. So you can see we've got you know a pretty abrupt taper there. Some kind of little cootie in there. I don't know what that is. I'll run my thread all the way up to the hook eye and back again to the front edge of the body. And at this point, I'm going to tie in my hackle. So I'm going to take a, uh, a black, this is a saddle feather. I want to strip some, some of the base. And then on a fly like this, I like to strip a little bit more on the inside of the turn. So when I tie this feather in, I'm going to tie it in right up against here, the front edge of the body here. I can get a hold of it. I'm going to come forward over that stem. I'll back my thread up. Um, and the first, you know, half turn or so is going to be bare stem. And that's going to allow that feather to stand up nice and straight. And I'm just going to get two or three turns. And I'll tie that feather off. And I'll trim the, trim the excess out of Make sure you get that locked down good and tight. Um, now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to trim just a little notch out of the top. You don't have to trim this all the way off. Just a little notch off the top of the fly. Um, and that's going to clear the way for the wing. So the wing on this is going to be uh, just natural CDC. You know, natural or uh, like a dark done. Um, natural CDC is getting hard to find these days. So uh, dyed dark done works pretty good. Even medium done. And I've cut the center of that, out of that feather. Let me show you what I did there. Cut the tips out of those feathers. Got two of them because they're a little sparse. And I'm going to bundle these up. Let me get them up here where you can see them. 
bundle these up into a clump, like a little clump of hair. I'm going to take that and tie that in up here on top with a few turns, and I can kind of pull that down to length. About like so. And then I'll trim that butt end out. You know, if you've got anything extra long, I, I wouldn't actually say this is really too extra long, but if you did have some extra long ones, you could come in and just kind of trim them at random lengths. Um, but I, cut, I sort of like that kind of ragged look that that's got right there. Now I'm going to bump my thread right up to the hook eye. And at this point, I'm going to take another white CDC feather. And I'm just going to take just the tip of it. So I'm just going to separate out that section. And you could do this with individual barbs as well. But I'm going to tie this in up here behind the hook eye. Make a little band of thread there. And what I want is I want this length to come up about halfway up the wing there. Uh, it might be a little long, so I can get in here and shorten this down a bit. Back off a couple turns. Shorten that a bit. Then I'll come in and trim that butt end out. Now to finish this off, we're going to build the, the thorax or the head here with another little bit of super fine dubbing. That didn't go very well at all. My fingers are really dry today. I was out shoveling snow, so apparently manual labor um, is detrimental to good fly tying. So. Next time your wife asks you to shovel the sidewalk, you can tell her that you've got plans to tie flies later that day. So at any rate, I'm going to make a, uh, a little ball. Let me know how that works out for you, by the way. It doesn't work at my house. Um, so if you are met with any degree of success to that, um, you know, good for you. So I just made that little ball now. And now I'm going to sweep that white up over the top and bind it down here. A narrow little band of thread and you can see that just leaves a short little stub up here on top i've got one short fiber stick it out we'll get rid of him and then i'll come in and whip finish right in that little neck and that is a shimazaki cdc ant um, kind of cool little fly very simple um you know and, and fairly fairly groundbreaking for the day um you know of incorporating the uh the cdc as the wing um, you know, this is a fly that uh, uh, I actually have fished a fair bit before, and I like to trim that hackle off on the bottom um, so that it lays flat. Generally, when you buy them, they are not, uh, that is not something that Ken did on the originals, but um, just like that right there. Sits pretty low on the water, easy to see, um, pretty imitative, and just kind of a good summertime uh, you know, water covering pattern. But that's uh, Ken Shimazaki, CDC Ant. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven.